Hi, welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I'm Carrie. I'm an art therapist as well as a financial aid advisor at UAS. And I uh, volunteered to provide an art therapy experience for anyone who's interested in accessing this video. And it'll be a recorded presentation initially with some uh, encouragement to create art as well as learn a little bit more about art therapy and some of the awesome resources that it provides for mental health as well as just general wellness, uh, engaging in creativity and, and being active with art making. Um, I have a resource list that I'll be posting as well in order to encourage anyone who is seeking any mental health counseling to make sure to get in touch with somebody who can help. Um, I am available to um, support anyone who needs any assistance or even is just curious about art making and art therapy and how that can be a, a resource for you. But again, I do want to make sure you know that there are some really great resources available in the Juno area as well as beyond. Um, so today I wanted to uh, acknowledge that there may be some interruptions or you may hear some noises as I am recording from my home. Um, specifically, my cat may show up on our video today, but I want to just acknowledge that, you know, this is, this is the time and place that we are in and we will have some of those um, experiences. And so I hope that you'll take some time to um, notice the differences in our lifestyles currently, but also uh, try to roll with whatever uh, new challenges have presented for you. Um, again, my name is Carrie, and um, I have a master's in art therapy counseling from Merrillhurst University. Um, it's a program that recently closed down, but at the same time um, provided me with the tools to work with folks who are experiencing mental health symptoms as well as are seeking wellness. Um, I incorporate art making into my therapeutic sessions whenever appropriate and try to encourage anyone who's interested in learning how creativity can be a benefit for them um, and providing resources on if you aren't feeling creative or what options you have as well as building those skills. For today, uh, I do want to touch on again that there may be some interruptions, um, but at the same time, uh, the the importance of some of those things in our lives that can ground us in the present moment. So while our pets may be really enjoying the fact that we're home, they can also be a really great benefit for our mental health. Uh, a pet can help ground you in the present moment, maybe get you outside for a walk or possibly just even sit with you quietly while you're on the couch. and. In my case, my cat likes to sit with me and purr, and I find that to be a really soothing experience. And I hope that you'll take that and use that as a grounding skill or just a, a moment to be mindful in your current situation. Um, I also encourage anyone who's interested that Bob Ross has some great YouTube videos. So if you are feeling like you want to try out some creativity, uh, that's a great place to start. Follow along with his videos. Pause fast forward, so zoom back in on that, and uh, and try it out. See how it works for you. And if not, then it's just really soothing to, to kind of listen to him describe art making and the benefits of art making as well as the kindness that you can have for yourself as an artist. But for today, I wanted to talk also about material processes. And what I mean by that is every art material that you work with, whether it's a pencil, a pen, if it's clay, if it's glue, whatever you find to be um, something you're attracted to or find uh, to be where you feel most creative, um, it's probably engaging something in your body that you're, you're drawn to for a reason. And, and I hope that you'll utilize that strength. Um, for instance, pens and pencils engage our mind. They engage our cognition. It's very reminiscent to be using a pencil and to be writing or drawing. And so it connects your mind to the paper that you are utilizing. Whereas paint may be more emotional. There's a soothing process as you might be moving your uh, brush back and forth across the page, almost like a rocking motion but also the paint itself is more fluid. And so if you feel like you're experiencing more emotions, um, paint can tap into those deep emotions that we have within ourselves. So just be conscious of some of those uh, material processes, but clay is another great one. It's, it's, it's very powerful experience to have something three-dimensional, have it be in front of you to interact with, to move around, to take up space within your, your perception and your wherever, your environment that you're in. Um, 
it can get unmanageable though. If it's too wet, it can become this uncontrollable mess and you have to step back and let it dry out for a little bit before it can be workable again. So some of those things that as an art therapist I look at, I look at how people respond to materials and if it's not successful, then maybe we need to switch. But if it is really working for you, how do we continue to experience the benefits of the creativity, the benefits of the materials that you're working with? Glue is one of those important ones that can seal up something. It can attach, it can bind together, but at the same time, sometimes it gets on your fingers and it's just awful. So being careful about what you're, what you're choosing and, and being mindful of what you're choosing and this internal responses that you have to the materials is so important. Again, art therapists can help you work through whatever responses you're having. Um, because we have the training as a mental health counselor to observe and to ask questions, but also to be aware of how you might be responding if you're not aware of it and bring that to your awareness. Um, I know I said awareness a lot right there, but it is something that I really uh, value a lot in my therapeutic process is providing that opportunity to look at something non-judgmental, but also in a safe way. Art therapy can provide that because you're making an object that's separate from you and you can look at it. You can look at a piece of paper and see what's on that piece of paper and maybe it has something important on it to you, but you have some distance from it and you can take a look at that in a way that it's not held inside in that emotional process that you have. Another thing that I always bring up about art therapy is process and product. Uh, what I mean by process is the art making process, the start to finish, the setup, the creation, the whole time that you're working up until you clean up. What is that process like? And how successful is that process? Or maybe it didn't go well and maybe it was a frustrating experience. Um, those are things that I always ask questions about in a, a therapeutic experience. What was it like to make this piece of art? And then the product itself, that end uh, object that you create or that art piece that you create, if it's still in process or still in progress, uh, where are you gonna go with it? Is it done? If it is done, what does it look like to you? Sometimes art is ugly. Sometimes art is not something that we feel we want to hold on to. Other times it is. Other times it's something that we're incredibly proud of. But I think each of those examples, an ugly art or something that we really value, each has, each has a, an important process for us. Each product is something that we need to take a look at and see what it means. That being said, it is if it is something that is really um, not, not important or maybe something that you need to get rid of, then that's the value of an art making piece, an art making session. You can, you can throw it away. And sometimes that can be a really powerful experience. One of the things I'd like to pause and, and take some time to do first is invite you to make art with me. Um, I'm going to provide a little warm up exercise that I'll do with you and then I'll provide a topic for you. Now, the, the, war, the warm up exercise, like I said, I'll do with you, but the art making topic, um, I want to provide it to you. And then if you choose to do it, which I hope you will, um, then spend some time afterward, after this recording is done and, and give yourself a moment, um, maybe 10 or 15 minutes to create art and then a few minutes to look at it afterwards. Um, but again, this is something that um, building awareness is the only way that we can make changes in our lives. And so I hope that you'll find some awareness in this process. But again, I'm happy to, um, if anyone reaches out uh, and wants to talk more about their art making afterwards, please do get in touch with me and, and we'll have a conversation about your art making. Um, so for the, the warm up exercise, uh, I want to start with a scribble drawing. So for the scribble, uh, you're going to be scribbling for just a short period of time. So choose a piece of paper, whatever size you feel comfortable with, but in the end, we're only gonna be scribbling for about 10 seconds. So for my example, my art's gonna be about four by six. Again, if you wanna go bigger, go for it. But again, we're just gonna be scribbling for 10 seconds. So whenever you're ready, after you've had a moment to find your paper and your pencil, pen, whatever works, um, we'll scribble for 10 seconds. 
I'm gonna count us off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sometimes it's good to not look at the paper while you're doing it, but if you do, that's fine. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your piece of paper and look at it from a distance, you know, maybe six, six to 10 inches, something along those lines. Look at each side. See if there's anything that stands out to you, any image that you find to be really powerful, or maybe it's just you can't get it out of your mind or you can't not see it. Um, doesn't necessarily matter. But what we're gonna try to do is develop that from your scribble. So I usually suggest you take another color. So if you're working with like a pen, maybe try and find a blue pen if you're using black or if you're using pencil, um, use a highlighter, something to just kind of show um, a more complete, uh, more complete picture basically. And so for my image, I'm gonna take a second. And I actually kind of see an egg. I see a dinosaur egg. So I've chosen a blue color. And I'm going to make a dinosaur egg out of this. Okay, so you can see that I have my, my egg shape here. And some embellishments there. And for me, I, knowing myself, it's probably that I'm feeling kind of isolated and feeling like I haven't seen a lot of people lately. And so I'm in a shell a little bit. So I'm just going to be a little bit more self-disclosing that way and, and notice what I see in my art. Now, this is me personally, but at the same time, if anybody else responds to that and finds that to be helpful, I, I really appreciate anyone reaching out to let me know if that um, stood out to them. But again, with the scribble drawing, it can be a great way to just have a, a small moment to yourself to kind of check in and see. So for me, feeling isolated at times during this entire process of being working from home and um, not seeing a lot of my support system, you know, using the phone a lot of the time to um, be in contact with people, life has changed pretty drastically. And so for me to check in with myself and say, okay, well, I'm feeling a little isolated. What can I do for myself to uh, be more um, active uh, with my community? Um, what do I need in order to feel more connected to people? Um, and now I can take steps in that. So transitioning a little bit to the next topic, I wanted to spend a minute to, again, encourage you to take some time and um, sit with this art making project. Um, but the topic that really stuck out to me is um, things you can control and things you can't. It seems like a lot of things have changed in our lives, like I just mentioned, and it's important to recognize what's within our power to control and what's not and providing awareness of that. So I'm going to task you with the option of creating images of the things in your life that feel out of control and things that are stable. What I would encourage you to do is consider dividing your page. So whatever size paper you choose, if it's eight and a half by 11, maybe you're dividing your page this way. Maybe it's this way. Maybe you need two pieces of paper. Maybe you need front and back. Any way to kind of make a division between these two topics. And again, things you can control and things you can't and creating images for both. Um, again, give yourself a time limit. Maybe it's check in with yourself after 20 minutes, set, a, set an alarm for 20 minutes and then look at your art. The important part is to look at your art as well too. Um, I suggest taping up your artwork on the wall and stepping back from it. Get some distance and look at it. Um, notice what emotions were coming up while you were creating it. Notice what emotions come up while you look at it. Were there things that were hard to look at? Things that stood out that you just, you see really clearly. Things that are maybe smaller and a little bit more hidden. These are all really great questions to ask yourself and things that I would ask you as well, too, if we were actually sitting in person or sitting in a group together. Again, try to be non-judgmental on your work. That's definitely sometimes a challenge, but at the same time, it is something that 
we look at it uh, in a way that's open and curious, we may be better able to increase our awareness of our situations. And so I want to end this video with um, just encourage you to still be aware of your resources, the people that are around you, the people that care about you, as well as the resources that are available for, um, you know, any, anyone who, who feels isolated. There are folks who really do care, professionals who care, such as myself. If anyone was to reach out with, to me, I would be really honored to be a part of this process with you. But again, I'll be posting some other resources online uh, alongside this video so that if you do have any needs, we can be as of assistance to you. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope that this video was valuable for you, and if you do have questions, to reach out to me. Thank you.